All right, so you have mastered guppy breeding. You had a female and a couple males or vice versa, and all of a sudden now you have 500 guppies in your tank. Whether you've been keeping a couple weeks or you've been keeping a couple decades, in the past you've been keeping community tanks and maybe breeding fish that have live young, so the live bearing fish, mollies, platies, guppies, endlers, that sort of thing. And now you want to step it up a notch. You want to try breeding something else. Maybe you want to make a little money. Maybe you want to protect a species. So today we're going to talk about 10 fish that I think are ideal for breeding for preservation and for profit. So I think all these fish fit the bill. Now, whether it's preserving a fish that is going extinct, usually due to human involvement in the wild habitat of that fish, or whether it is a line of fish that was bred and is very hard to find now, either way, these are things that have value in the hobby. They have stories that are waiting to be uncovered, that are waiting to be told, waiting to be passed down. And I find it absolutely amazing when you can trace back five or six different breeders and each one added something, a different color or a larger fin or a different curve to the fin or shape. And you can tell that story by looking at the fish. And there's all sorts of lines out there like that. And there's also all sorts of fish that will make money. And so another little way to challenge yourself while you're doing this is to think about First, making your money back. If, can you make the money you spent on the fish? And this is where you get into buying quality fish from a quality source. So we're going to count down the top 10 fish that fit the bill for today's theme. And I specifically am pulling these from dansfish.com because I've worked with Dan's Fish now for a number of years, known them a while, and I think that they're doing everything correct ethically. Would I buy all my community fish from them? Probably not. It's a little pricey, but... He is the kind of guy who will find out who was that person in Germany that bred this one type of angelfish all through the 70s and now the line is lost and maybe only one or two people have it still and he finds it and he brings it back and makes sure the genetics are good and then he quarantines it and then he puts it out there with that information or maybe it's a new species that not many people have seen or one that's actually extinct in the wild, whatever it may be. This guy is literally helping the future of these fish and the hobby. And so I want to highlight some of the stuff that's literally on his site right now. And I happen to have an affiliate link if you want to get a discount and you want to help out the channel a little bit. Uh, you can use the code Alex. Just my name, however you want to do it. Uh, the, the case doesn't matter, upper or lower case. will be contributing to a very ethical shipper of fish and a guy who's into sustainability. He's into storytelling. He's into biology, conservation, preservation, and education. And those are the things we love on this channel. So let's count them down right now. The top 10 fish I think you should try breeding next if you're ready to step it up a level. All right, starting the countdown at number 10, we have paradise fish. And, you know, Macropodus opercularis, awesome fish. These are one of the first fish after goldfish and after bettas kept in captivity. The first one to ever reach Europe or the United States was in the mid-1800s, and they come in a whole lot of varieties. There are wild types, there are these longer fin kinds, and there are domestic variants, and here you can see like a black long fin tiger form, which is kind of unusual. You don't usually see this. Uh, they're really affordable usually, you know, five to ten bucks for the basic ones. And then there's even fancier ones uh, like these ones here, these blue flame ones uh, that they've got right now at Dan's. They build bubble nests and then the parents take care of it until the eggs hatch. Then after that, you, you kind of want to get the parents into another space if you can, ideally. But they're a great one for outside tubbing in the summer and they make a whole lot of babies so you can make your money back and they kind of just have babies themselves you just need to keep them in good shape uh, so it's a really cool fish uh, to have and a really good one to kind of teach you what what the bubble nesting types of fish like those garamis and uh, bettas what they're like to breed all right, coming in at number nine, we've got angelfish. And I didn't want to just pick one angelfish. Basically, any angelfish you pick, whether you get the, you know, five or six dollar teeny tiny ones at the local store, or you get one of these medium to small, like silver dollar size ones, like these golden angels here, or you go all out and get an angel like these Manakapuru redbacks, these are actually a specific angelfish 
from a specific part of the world. If you go to Dan's website, you can actually see most of the fish as he gets orders in, and he puts new videos up all the time. But these are absolutely beautiful, and they are cichlids, so they take care of their young, but they also have a really interesting behavior but they're absolutely beautiful they're a great one for a centerpiece fish in your aquarium and watching them spawn take care of a nest then take care of the fry and lead them around the tank it's absolutely awesome it is like quintessential to uh being a fish keeper i feel like it's one of the the fish you got to check out now he also sources extremely rare varieties whether that's a specific river source like these ones here or whether that's something created in captivity. Uh, I think that uh, they're both a great way to go. The, the ones that are from captivity, obviously, are going to be a bit easier to keep, like these Bulgarian lilacs. And, you know, whatever the price you buy them for is, is probably around what you can sell the babies for when you, it's time to sell them. So they're an awesome fish all around, and there's always new kinds coming out, always new collection points uh, coming up in the hobby. Okay, coming in at number eight, we have a beautiful West African cichlid, and I could have easily just said Crebenzis. Crebenzis are a great fish uh, to breed, and here you can get a pair of them, but I'm going to say the Sunocrenulabris ruaha. These are an awesome fish. They're really beautiful, and they are one of the earliest fish to the truly tropical hobby actually they are known as victorian mouth brooders in some places but this is actually one of the smallest varieties of the so-called victorian mouth brooders so they keep their babies in their mouth and being a cichlid just like angelfish they will take care of their young for the first part of their lives and it is just fascinating to watch and yet again another fish where you keep the water right and they will lead you the rest of the way Easy to breed, easy to look at, fun to look at, and a really cool fish that doesn't need special water parameters or anything. They live in pretty neutral waters in West Africa and Central Africa. Number seven is going to be a live bearer. And live bearers are great. You know, if you've had your basic endler or guppy, they just make lots of their own babies on their own. There are all sorts of different uh, domestic versions, but what I think is the coolest live bearer on here right now is probably, I mean, well, maybe this Hamburg high fin sword tail trio. I mean, look at that. That's brand new colors. That is a world championship winning fish. Uh, but it's way out of the price range. I mean, this is if you breed fish for a living and you're on the world stage kind of thing. What I was going to suggest for your average hobbyist is just a normal sword tail. Something, uh, you know, within a normal range price-wise. And just like you could pay... $250 for a set of fish, you could just as easily pay $10 or $15 for a really beautiful fish like this Berlin Swordtail, $30 for these beautiful orange sailfin mollies. Um, again, they're live bearers. They're kind of the middle of the road. I think this would be a great starter for anybody, the Pineapple Swordtail. They're only 8 bucks a piece. They're a really beautiful fish. This batch is looking nice and colorful and healthy. You really see that kind of yellow transitioning to orange when you see them all swimming together. And I'm sure they're already having babies in there. Now, they look after their own. They tend to not eat their own babies too badly, usually, if you have lots of plants. Uh, but they're kind of the next step up from a guppy because they are a little more gentle as you get into these fancy lines. Um, they do have less babies, and they do want kind of harder water, more aeration, things like that in general. All right, coming in at number six, we are going to have another cichlid because I think they're great practice. Cichlids take care of their young, but they also, uh, you know, have all sorts of different ways of doing so. Now, this is the zebra acara, and they are incredibly stunning. Very, very uh, hard to come by this specific fish in my experience. Uh, and they are just super interesting. They come... Uh, in at only three or four inches fully grown so there's something that's manageable but they can absolutely put on a show while they're spawning their colors are insane and uh, they are kind of one of the more expensive little cichlids going around the hobby right now but there's plenty of demand for them and they're fairly easy to keep so i highly recommend these and i think they'll teach you a lot about fish keeping uh, just in the process of watching them you learn little tips tips and tricks and the fish kind of teach you when it's time to move the babies or when you need to grow out tank or how the diet is going things like that they're pretty forgiving cichlids in general all right coming in at number five we have the black chinned live bear these are also known as the metallic live bear and they are 
they're just awesome when they spawn the way they kind of chase each other around the tank and the little mating dances they do for one another they're just super unique uh you know another fish that i want to mention while we're here is the the red-tailed goodyid these are all but extinct in the wild the goodyids are a group of fish from uh central mexico these are a stunning fish uh, that has live babies, like I said, and it's a little more difficult to care for. They like a little bit harder water generally. Um, they will eat prepared foods, but they do love uh, live food as well, and they they need help. They, the genetics need to be preserved because right now the last few of them are going extinct in many of the rivers. So universities and fish keepers around the world are working together to actually preserve these beautiful fish, which get a little bit larger than your typical guppy or uh, live bear like that. These get more like three and a half inches um, when they're fully mature. But an awesome fish, and for number five, I was going to say that it's a tie between uh, any of the beautiful uh, live bears that have not yet been domesticated. All right, coming in at number four, we have the Corydoras. Now, there are so many options in the Corydoras world, and the prices range just as much as the selection of colors do. I want to just show you the Swartz uh, Cory here. There's the Swartz Eye Cory also, but there's all different finishes and things, and I think a good one for spawning right now is the ba Black Venezuelan Corid Corydoras. Now, these are stunning. Uh, they're also usually called Schwartz Eye, but they are looking to be mostly... Uh, the Corydora Aeneas, uh, which is a very common quarry around the world, but like you can see here on the orange Venezuela quarry, they're, I think they're, they're kind of borrowing that uh, Venezuela name from these ones that were popular about two or three years ago, these orange ones, uh, but really they're just they're, they're, they're Brazilian Corydoras, and these black ones were bred in Germany, so uh, kind of interesting, uh, even though the name uh, is a little misleading. But they are right in the middle to high price range where you pay $30 a fish. But if you have a group of five, six of these and they have, you know, 30, 40 to 100, 200 babies as they get bigger, uh, it's really fun to watch them on the glass. It's really easy to induce them into spawning. And they're a pleasant fish to have, totally peaceful. They work well in a community. And you can swipe the eggs out of the community tank. So you don't need a standalone tank uh, other than to raise the babies in. And actually, you can just raise the fry for a month or two in a tote if you need to and then put them back in with the whole community uh so a good way to make money and a way to preserve a new line that is sure to be popular for a long time coming all right coming in at number three we've got the licorice garami now these are a very fascinating fish uh they are also sadly facing close to extinction this is a really great price for these they used to be hundreds of dollars to get certain varieties of these fish and while there are many varieties of these little guys they love acidic water black water so if you're trying to get into that black water spawning these guys don't need aeration or filtration so much uh you know they're kind of like a beta in that way where they can be kept very simple if you know what you're doing and they will spawn only when the ph is very low so if you have hard water i'd avoid these guys but they need help they're going extinct on the island of borneo uh, and all throughout indonesia in general but they are a beautiful fish when spawning and a delicate and interesting behaving fish all the time but i highly recommend checking out the licorice garami number two whether you can get these locally or you get them here gold ring danios these ones are a little unusual but absolutely stunners i have a group of these as you can see and they do great for me they definitely need kind of a species only tank in order to be able to collect the eggs because otherwise they just get eaten but they are fairly easy to breed a good egg scatterer to practice with uh you know danios in general whether it's a zebra danio or kite or a hatchet danio whatever you may be looking at they're a really good egg scatterer to learn on and actually science uses them all the time in the lab for various things studying genetics and so forth so these are a very underrated fish with real stunner quality you see actual kind of like burgundy tones on them and copper gold silver and bronze like these different metallic beautiful reflective tones as well as like light ghostly blue tones and red tones on them when they're excited and spawning i just these are one of my all-time favorites in the hobby despite their kind of understated look all right, number one on the list, it is going to be a pseudomagill, which these guys are, I mean, 
they're they're incredible. They're beautiful. They're fun to watch. They're easy to spawn. They spawn differently than everything else we've talked about. They lay eggs every few days. Sometimes every morning, the female will lay two to three eggs. Uh, sometimes four or five when they get a little bit bigger, and they will stick them to plants. And they carry them under their belly for a few hours in the morning. And the males do this big display in the morning and kind of show off who's boss, who's got the prettiest fins spinning around in circles. And then the females will lay the eggs onto plants or a spawning mop if you have it. And then from there, you can just take that out and hatch it in a different tank. Or you can literally collect the eggs off of it and hatch them in a little Tupperware container. They're not incredibly expensive, but but they are worth enough that you can make some money spawning them, uh, seeing as they're going for anywhere between $10 and $15 uh, around the U.S. right now. And uh, I just think they're beautiful, entertaining, and exquisite. They can be kept in a community tank of some of these other incredible rainbow fish and pseudomagills as well. And they hang out right up at top. So just be aware, they are a bit of a jumper, and uh, they are an incredibly beautiful fish uh, that also could use protecting because their habitat is fading fast and that's it my friends you've made it to the end and i want to thank you so much for doing so all of you who do make it to the end thank you for liking and subscribing i know you're the kind of people who do that you wouldn't have stuck around if you're not that kind of person so thank you for the support of the channel and also thank you for your thoughts ideas suggestions you guys make this channel what it is and i can't do it without you so i hope you have a wonderful day and i'll see you guys next time on fishery